took a fair little while to get going, sadly. But looks like we've made it at the end. Ross, Fred, nice little surprise. Wellington, Bill and Sons. And as you can see over there, yeah, it took a bit to get this to passable standard, but I think we're finally there now. I believe that ring pull is also made by W&J Lawley. Obviously this is a W&J Lawley system as well, so... That's why I've got it fitted on this one. So yeah, let's give it a go. Like most lawley systems, there seem to be a few rough patches and lettering. Something I've noticed on the 401 402 series systems a fair bit now. So right, let's give this another go. Say the system is tame is certainly certainly something to say. Yeah, it's defo tame system, tame flusher. It also seems like it's flushing six litres. Pretty short for a two gallon cast on system. Right, system view time now. Okay, here's the lid. Painted in smooth quick cream. Hammerite paint. But the reason I use smooth cream is because it gives us a warm white colour rather than cream. Well, if you paint it with hammerite white, you get very sort of cold, harsh, modern white. But actually, I think in the future I'll sort of ask which shade of white the customer would want. Because this is also a customer system as well, so. Yeah. It's been a fairly busy week, mentally, personally, and. Other jobs in general, which you can do, like the pod defects. There's the back side of the system. Now, as you can see, there I've had to. If you may remember the original video, I had to go out to some of the fulcrum, stop going down too far. Well, that's now been and done. And if you also remember from the original video, there was a crack at the bottom of the system. That's since been repaired by Mongers kindly. We've also lined the system with tank liner. But the only problem with the tank liner is it's very sticky and it doesn't dry, which I wasn't really prepared for, to be fair. 
job. It does its job. It works well. See if the heating uh, system lined up well. So even though it's going to be a bit wet, sticky and a bit messy inside, I believe it defo will future-proof the system more than priming and right paint and coating existing surface of rust. So we've all these bits off. Float valve is also a WJ Lawley source one, which I found in my bucket of brass fittings. So it's high cost and all the float valve. The top of the end. As you can see, the water line's just up there. This one takes a little while to get to its point, but it's fully tested and it does shut off in the end. So It's still got a bit of leverage up there, so yep, that is a pass for that one. Right now, inside the system, we can see how far the fork goes down. And it stops at a spot at a sort of perfect level. Oh. Through the water level well had to cut the standpipe down to the stuff in the pool for it. And the soil unfortunately lost up, but it should clear in the downtown, at least not yet the system to be lost in the surface in here. Up to line now. Yep. So there we go. Also, this, this, this float valve here, although made by W and J Lawley, this is actually a standard float valve that was typically that's typically used down in South Africa, and I believe they still make these very valves today, which is really cool. To be fair, it's nice to see a bit of history, sort of. Finger on the elsewhere in South Africa, obviously, and taken the Scottish Shanks beta valves, and they're still making them today as well, which is really cool. So it's got a slight sort of South African style feature to the system, but I like it. Anyway, let's give it another flush. Thanks for watching.